highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Scotch River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's inner west. The Shire of Hornsby, known as the Bushland Shire, has 70% natural bushland. It stretches from the M2 Hills motorway in the south to Wiseman's Ferry in the north. The original occupants of the region were people from the Darug and Karingai language groups. There are more than 200 known Aboriginal sites in the Shire. In 1817, ex-convict Solomon Wiseman was granted a lease of 200 acres on the Hawkesbury River, which became known as Wiseman's Ferry. He built an elaborate house, Cobham Hall, established the Branch Inn and operated a ferry service. The ferrying crossing was moved in 1829 to its current position when a route was chosen for the Great North Road. Since Wiseman's death, the house has been in continuous use as an inn or hotel under various names. Today it forms the main part of the Wiseman's Ferry Inn. The Great North Road, built by convicts between 1826 and 1836, opened up the western side of the Shire. It commenced at Parramatta Road, crossed the Parramatta River by boat, passed through Ride and Dural before reaching the Hawkesbury River at Wiseman's Ferry. Today, north of Wiseman's Ferry, a 43 kilometre section of the road remains unchanged and relatively intact and has been named the Old Great North Road to distinguish it from other modernised sections. The first European settler in the vicinity of Hornsby was Thomas Edward Higgins, who was granted land in Old Man Valley. He sold timber and also made a living from farming and orchards on the slopes of the valley, believed to be named after the old man kangaroos that grazed there. Three generations of the family lived in the valley. The Higgins family cemetery still exists. In 1830, Chief Constable John Thorne and Constable Samuel Horn were searching for two bushrangers. Horn shot and killed John McNamara. Thorne pursued William Dalton on foot and captured him. As a reward, they received grants of land. Thornley and Hornsby were named after these grants. Between 1847 and 1852, George Peat created a track between Olborough Road and the Hawkesbury River. Peat's Ferry Road opened up the eastern side of the Shire along what is now the Pacific Highway. Before the railway line was built, the present-day Hornsby was sparsely populated and called Jack's Island. The Northern Railway line was extended from Strathfield to the Hawkesbury River in 1886. A railway station named Hornsby Junction was at the junction of the Northern Line and the yet-to-be-completed North Shore Line, which arrived in 1893. Hornsby Station was one stop south of Hornsby Junction. In 1894, due to confusion by commuters, Hornsby Station became Normanhurst, named after local activist and engineer Norman Self. In 1900, Hornsby Junction Station assumed the current name of Hornsby. Development within the Shire followed the railway lines. Paddocks and orchards were sold for subdivision. It became a popular residential area for families of businessmen who commuted to work in the city. The area was advertised as comparable to the Lower Blue Mountains, with a healthy climate away from the smog of the city. Hornsby developed as a railway town, providing work for railway employees, shopkeepers and publicans. The railway hotel was built in 1886 at the corner of Burdett, now Coronation, and Cola, now Station, Streets. Mount Errington is a neighbourhood on the western side of the suburb. It was named after a home built on the corner of Rosemead Road and Dural Street by Oscar Garibaldi Roberts in 1898. The house is now Blue Gum Community School. In 1907, land known as Mount Wilger Estate was purchased by Georgina Clark, wife of Sydney Draper and retailer Henry Marcus Clark. To facilitate the arrival of guests to the property, Clark built a 160 metre long suspension bridge over the deep gully which lies between Mount Wilger and Hornsby Railway Station. In 1926, 
the house and a portion of its land was sold and subdivided. The large allotment containing Mount Wilga House remained in private hands until its sale in 1952 to the Commonwealth of Australia for use as a rehabilitation hospital. Today the property is privately owned. Hornsby Park was set aside as a reserve in 1896. In 1962 an Olympic swimming pool opened in the park. A bicentenary fountain was erected in 1970 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the discovery and exploration of the east coast of Australia by James Cook. In 2012, the fountain was turned off during the Aquatic and Leisure Centre redevelopment. Two years later it was demolished because Cook's Landing had little direct relevance to Hornsby Shire. The monolith centrepiece of the fountain was relocated to Fagan Park, Galston, to feature in a Japanese garden. Circa 1903, blue metal quarrying began in Old Man Valley. By the 1920s, the quarry was in full production and operating on a commercial scale. Initially, Hornsby Shire Council acquired the lease to operate the quarry. Various companies operated there until its closure in 2003. The council acquired the quarry and adjacent land, today the site of a new Hornsby Park. Browsery Cottage was built by station master James Glynn, circa 1902. Originally called Strathmore, it is now known as the Browsery from the time of its occupation as an antique shop. Hornsby Shire Council was incorporated in 1906. Council chambers were constructed in 1915. A second story was added in 1930. Administration buildings, including the original library, opened in 1972. The library was relocated to its present position in 1995. 1-3 Jersey Street, built circa 1910, was the location of the Bank of North Queensland, the first bank in Hornsby. In 1911, a fire broke out in McDonald's grocery store and spread to surrounding buildings in Hornsby's business district. Chatswood Fire Brigade were unable to assist as it was located outside their area. The Hornsby Progress Association made requests for a local fire brigade to be established. Hornsby Fire Brigade became operational in 1914 in a cottage on Pete's Ferry Road. The first purpose-built fire station opened in 1925. It served the community until its destruction by fire in 1971. The following year, Hornsby Fire Brigade occupied a new station on Bridge Street. Hornsby has two sides, the old and the new. The suburb is split in half by the train line. The old or western side has a few streets of shops, the Odeon Cinema, a walk through Milk Bar and former bank buildings. Hornsby Amusements opened the Hornsby Picture Theatre, an open-air theatre, in 1912. It was rebuilt in 1923 and renovated in 1937. In the 1990s, it was renamed the Odeon. A Bank of New South Wales opened on the corner of Dural Street and Pete's Ferry Road in 1918. A second story was added in 1924. When redevelopment took place in 2006, the historic facade was retained. 193 Pete's Ferry Road was a rural bank built circa 1940. Hornsby War Memorial was unveiled in 1923. The memorial, originally located opposite William Street in the centre of the roadway, was later moved to its present position in Cenotaph Park. In 1957, a bushfire started in Galston Gorge and raced up the valley to Hornsby. It devastated homes, a scout hall, a timber yard, Hornsby Public and Girls Domestic Science Schools and the 1888 School of Arts. Dural Lane displays murals depicting Hornsby in the early 20th century. The new or east side is mostly a shopping mall. Westfield stands on the site of Pakenham a two-storied, 22-room 
mansion built in 1894 by James Shannon. It was leased in 1929 by the Mrs Field, who converted it to St Kilda Private Hospital. In 1960, it was demolished to make way for Westfield Shopping Centre. A competing shopping centre, Northgate, which opened in 1979, was eventually bought by Westfield. In late 1999, the two sites were amalgamated. The original Westfield was demolished and Northgate was renovated to create the new Westfield Hornsby, which opened in 2001. A water sculpture, the largest water-driven pendulum clock in the world, was unveiled in 1993. It incorporates a Greek clock from the 4th century BC, a thousand-year-old Chinese water wheel clock with 20 articulated buckets, and an 18th century English tubular cast bronze carillion. Its theme, man, time and the environment, integrates flora and fauna found in the Hawkesbury Shire. Parks were named after former residents. Ginger Meggs, a red-headed kid in comic strips, was always getting up to mischief. The man responsible for creating the character was James C. or Jimmy Banks, who started the comic strip in 1921. The park where he played as a child was named in honour of him in 1997. Sir Tanet William Edgeworth David, known as Edgeworth David, was a geologist and polar explorer. In 1999, his former home, Curing Bar, was acquired by Hornsby Shire Council. The garden is now a public park, Edgeworth David Garden. The coming of the railway led to the development of suburbs. Waitara takes its name from the Waitara River in New Zealand, where Australian troops fought as Imperial volunteers during the New Zealand Wars. Hornsby Junction Hotel, the district's oldest pub, opened in 1884. After the railway station opened, the hotel changed its name to the Waitara Hotel to reflect the name of the new suburb. The hotel was rebuilt in the 1950s and renamed the Blue Gum Hotel. The Waitara Foundling Home operated from 1898 until Our Lady of Mercy Home was established in 1928. It closed in 1977 and was demolished. New buildings were constructed and opened as the Mercy Family Life Centre, today the site of a Catholic care facility. Cheltenham takes its name from a house built by William Chorley, a Sydney tailor and men's outfitter. He named the house after his birthplace in England. When a railway station opened in 1898, Chorley asked the government to name it after his property. He put a covenant on the land to ensure it would retain its bushland character after subdivision. Beecroft is named after the sisters Hannah and Mary Beecroft, the first and second wives of Henry Copeland, Minister of Lands. Beecroft was orchard country before its suburban development. Due to the strength of the temperance movement in Beecroft at that time, there have never been any hotels in the suburb. The School of Arts, built in 1904, is today part of the Beecroft Community Centre. Villa and orchard blocks of land were advertised for sale at Pennant Hills. Fruit from the orchards was transported to Sydney by train. The highest altitude in the suburb is Observatory Park, the site of a trig station established in 1889. An observatory called Red Hill was built there in the 1890s. The principal wireless station for the whole of Australia was situated at Pennant Hills in 1912. The tower, 122 metres high. The site later became the Sydney Transmission Centre for Amalgamated Wireless Australasia Limited, the wireless mast has since been demolished. During the 1960s and 1970s, Pennant Hills was the location of Chelmsford Private Hospital, where psychiatric deep sleep therapy conducted by Dr Harry Bailey resulted in the deaths of dozens of patients. Thornley, named after Constable John Thorne, is one of the highest points in the Sydney Basin. Because of the good soil and higher than average rainfall, 
The area was originally used for orcharding. When the railway station opened in 1886, it was primarily used to transport local produce, mainly citrus fruits, to the city markets. When the area was subdivided for housing in 1919, advertisements used the tagline, Live on the Heights. In 1901, National Brickworks started operating at Thornley. It ceased manufacturing in 1975. The brick pit was used as a tip before being converted to Brick Pit Park. In 1913, the largest malt works in the Southern Hemisphere was established by W.G. Chilvers. Commercial development of the area in the 1970s and 80s led to demolition of historic buildings. The 1890 Thornley School of Arts, the Astra Theatre, originally named the Prince of Wales Theatre in 1923, the Royal Hotel and Thornley Public School with its World War I Memorial Classroom. The Thornley Community Centre was constructed for community use following the demolition of the School of Arts. Normanhurst Railway Station was originally known as Hornsby. It was renamed in 1900. Normanhurst is derived from the name of prominent resident civil engineer Norman Self, whose home, Gilligalula, still stands on Pennant Hills Road. Loretto Convent, established in 1897, was primarily a girls' boarding school. It became the largest girls' boarding school in New South Wales. Today, Loretto is an independent Catholic school. From the 1860s, citrus orchards were established in Asquith, named after British Prime Minister Herbert Asquith. Some streets in the suburb are named after British Cabinet members. The railway station, funded by local residents, opened in 1915. Land sales were held on the day of the opening. Fowler's Pottery opened in 1912. It produced earthenware pipes and ceramic building materials until its closure during the Great Depression. Another local industry which closed at that time was Bullock's Brickworks. In the 1950s, Asquith was rezoned as an industrial area. Wrigley's Chewing Gum Factory opened in 1960. Story Park was created on the Fowler's Pottery site. After World War II, before conversion to an oval, the land was used as a camp for displaced persons. Known as Bolt Camp, it was dismantled towards the end of 1952 and the land leased to the Asquith Bowling Club. Mount Kohler was originally known as Kohler, the name first used by naturalist George Cayley to describe a koala in a letter to botanist Sir Joseph Banks. When Hornsby became a shire in 1906, Mount was added to the name. During World War II, it was a location of a military airstrip and army base. When the Pacific Highway was built in 1989, it cut through the airstrip and isolated two holes of the Asquith Golf Course. Foxglow Oval was the former Mount Kohler tip. The suburb includes Bob and Head, a popular recreation area since the 1930s. Mount Karingai is divided into two by the Pacific Highway, Main Northern Railway Line and Pacific Motorway. The east and west sides are connected by road and pedestrian bridges. The original railway station opens as Karingai in 1901. Mount was later added to it. From 1916, the village's Harwood Hall hosted community events. It burnt down in 1967. Mount Kurungai's industrial area is home to many diverse businesses. Barawa means place of many shells, referring to the many shell middens on Barawa Creek. The area has many Aboriginal carvings. The railway was established in 1887. Barawa District Hall began its life in 1898 as a one-room school. It was extended with the addition of a larger room in 1912. When a new school was opened in 1952, Hornsby Council took control of the old one. Since 1984, the Lions Club have managed the hall. 
Barara Waters is located on Barara Creek, a tributary of the Hawkesbury River. The Barara Water Ferries, a toll-free car ferry, connects the East Bank to the West Bank. Barara Waters Inn was originally a guest house dating from the 1930s. Karan lies in the eastern section of the Kurungai Chase National Park. A station and platform were constructed in 1901. Karan was originally a crossing loop to allow trains on the single line north track to pass each other. With the coming of the railway, Karan became a popular holiday spot and a regular starting point for bushwalkers. A notable landmark in the Karan area is Pie in the Sky on the Pacific Highway. Austral Water Gardens, Australia's leading water garden specialist, was established in 1942. Brooklyn occupies a strip of waterfront along the southern bank of the Hawkesbury River. It was known as Pete's Ferry Crossing until 1883, when a subdivision of land owned by Peter and William Fagan was advertised by the name of Brooklyn. The existing hotel, known as the Flat Rock Hotel, was changed to the Brooklyn Hotel the following year. The hotel closed in 1913 and the building was destroyed by fire in the 1920s. The Hawkesbury Railway Hotel opened in 1900. It now operates as the Angler's Rest. The riverboat postman, which commenced in 1910, takes tourists on its mail run to boat access only settlements along the Hawkesbury River. Today the Bushland Shire, with areas of urban and industrial activity, remains predominantly rural and bushland. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel, it's free. Coming soon, Rosebury, Model Industrial Residential Estate. And check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com. Visit us the first Saturday of every month from 1.30 to 4.30, 187 Princess Highway, St Peter's.